Hi, Miss Puff. Hi, Nighters. You want some tuna? You want some tuna? Get you some tuna. Ready? And then look who gets busted licking the remnants of the tuna plate. Abby. Abby. Abby, what are you doing? So turkey sandwiches are getting a little done. I think we've had enough of turkey for a while. Um, I wanted to share, again, I, I'm doing my vlogging for myself, kind of like therapy, but also I'm sharing um, some history for my grandchildren to uh, remember me and remember my family. Um, again, I, I was raised by an older mom. Atticus has an older mom. My mom had an older mom. And so, um, generationally, we've all had our children in our, in, as far as I'm concerned, and my mother. There's like anywhere between 36 years to 40 year difference between certain children. But my first son and, um, has grandchildren and then, of course, has given me grandchildren. But, um, they're in a different state and I, I just want to kind of record for them and then also um, for the future for Atticus's children. He just needs to find himself a really awesome wife. Hopefully one that likes to do gardening and homesteading too. That would be nice but I'm not really sure which direction Atticus wants to go with that. Because he has his limitations. He has his own likes. Lucy just walked by. Um, but I wanted to share a really super simple hot uh, sandwich that comes from my side of the family when I was growing up. And these are the ingredients. It's your favorite barbecue sauce, which I have grown to love. Trader Joe's barbecue sauce. It was off the shelf for a while and I had a small heart attack and panicked for several months while they changed it from just regular barbecue sauce to organic barbecue sauce, which is silly. Um, you can have the other while you're making the new, but I'm not in charge of Trader Joe's. They've disappointed me on so many occasions taking away favorite foods that I've had for years and then suddenly they disappear. No warning, but um, it's one of my things about Trader Joe's and Lucy came back. My thing about Trader Joe's and sometimes I'll boycott them for a while and then they'll come up with something else that I enjoy. Hi baby wall. Are you okay? Alright. Then, so it's barbecue sauce. Your favorite bologna. This one is Oscar Mayer. My bologna has a first name. It's O-S-C-A-R. My bologna has a second name. It's M-A-Y-E-R. Oh, I love to eat it every day. If you ask me why, I'll say. Because Oscar Mayer has a way up with B-O-L-O-G-N-A. That, that was a little jingle. But when I was a kid... We had a Vons market out here in Southern California. They had Hughes, they had um, a bunch of different supermarkets that went out of business. And, but Vons has, has endured, but they, they kind of combined with Albertsons right now. But when I was a kid, Vons had their very own bologna, bologna. We call it bologna. And it was so much better. It was a little thicker. It had a better texture. It was a little denser. The Oscar Mayer is soft. 
and it's just not the same. And I have no idea when they stopped making it. It was just like, again, no warning, and it's a product you grew up with for years, and it's suddenly gone. And my mom always had Miracle Whip. We didn't have uh, real mail. We didn't have Hellman's or anything like that. Um, craft mayonnaise. It was always Miracle Whip. And even though it's um, really a dressing, it's listed as a dressing, uh, and ours came in a glass jar. Everything came in glass like this. But um, it was always Miracle Whip on our sandwiches, and I thought that was mayonnaise. And then when I tasted real mayonnaise, I thought, that is so blah. And it had a weird texture to it. And it made me kind of sick. So I've always used Miracle Whip. Even in, in uh, recipes that call for mayonnaise, I use Miracle Whip. And then, and then your favorite bread, whatever that might be. It could be your own baked bread. Or um, we use wheat bread um, that's on sale. <laughs> and it's just an inexpensive meal. And I have my trusty knife. My mom gave me a set of knives, a, a little bit larger one, and this little peeling knife. And it has been with me now for 40-something years. She gave it to me when I was a little, uh, a little, I've always been little, um, a, a, a young wife and mother. And I cherish it. I only hand wash it, and it, like everything, when you use it, you wear it out. And it just has that nice patina to it, that, that ages look that people are always looking for in antiques. But that's vintage. Antique is when it's 100 years or more. And then I have my cutting board. So I'm going to show you how to make um, barbecue bologna sandwiches. I'm going to use my, my new cast iron pan that's over there on the stove. But I want to make something clear, too. When Atticus was on the show for the middle, they, they, we read the script at the table read, and they said barbecue bologna, and I was blown away. I thought we were the only family that ever made barbecue bologna, and it was something in the San Fernando Valley that people did. Um, I'm not even sure where my mom came up with it. It might have been my dad. My dad was like a ketchup-holic and he put ketchup on eggs and everything. So I don't know if it was his his thing that he made up. He was also, um, my dad was a, he wasn't a chef. He was a cook at Dupar's restaurant um, out in Hollywood or LA. I'm not exactly sure which, which one he was at. And that was his first job when he came here to California from Michigan because of his health. But he, he, he came up with, there's, there's another dish that I guess I'm going to show later on too that, that we made. But this one is, is a family favorite and so I wanted to share it so that um, it's on record as a recipe. So um, I'm going to set up my camera so that we can, I can just basically show you how it's done. Okay, so basically I just opened up the package easy peasy and I and I brought out two pieces of bologna because I want to make it a nice thick sandwich Atticus and I usually split our sandwiches and share them and um, have a little side dishes but what you do is is you make it kind of like a peace sign but you don't go all the way through and you cut it into three places and the reason you do that is because bologna when you fry it um, it, it will bubble up you know what? I just realized I didn't really finish my story about the middle. So, on the show The Middle, when we were at the table read, they talked about barbecue bologna sandwiches. And the thing is, though, is I want to make sure that they don't think that I have stolen this idea because this idea it was my childhood and um, came from my side of the family. But on the middle, they went ahead and when they said barbecue, they literally put it on a barbecue, uh, the kind with coals and a grill, and they barbecued on that. And there's a scene where Mike and Brick 
are barbecuing bologna, which is, again, a cheap meal at that time. By the way, I get my bologna at the 99 cent store. It's a whole lot cheaper than the market, though it's not Bond's brand. Um, so I want to make sure that it's clear that I'm not stealing something from the show, that this is, this is a tradition from my family from way back in the 50s. And so, got to make that clear. So that, that's how it looks. So you have three, three cuts so it, when it doesn't bubble over. Then I'm going to go over to the stove where I am going to I'll turn up the overhead light, get a better look, start the fire, heat her up. My awesome new pan that I love. Oh, that's me. And then I, it's so easy. It's ridiculous. And you, you know what? We're all real. I, I like fancy food sometimes. Sometimes. Rarely. But ever since COVID, and we've been able to cook at home all the time, and Atticus is somewhat um, not on, well, he's definitely not on set of the middle anymore. He's on other sets. So I was looking for tongs that were smaller that my mom used to use. And that's the bigger ones that I actually use when I'm canning. I probably didn't have to put in that much barbecue sauce. Yikes. And it does splatter. Just so you know. Look at the other one. That baby in. And then this is the way you barbecue bologna. Not on a grill. This it's with barbecue sauce. And you just sort of wait until it's done. In the meanwhile, because what what you want, oh especially if you have a sweet barbecue sauce you want you want that caramelized kind of sauce um, in the pan and then like like I said the Vons brand of bologna it was thicker and it would get a nice crispy little caramelized edge to it and I cannot for the life of me get it that way with um, any other bologna that's on the market now but I'm gonna go ahead while that's cooking. Get out a couple of slices of bread. Okay, again, when I was a kid, it was a jar. You opened up the jar and you pulled, pulled out your mail. Squeeze. Now you have to squeeze. It's harder for me to judge from a squeeze bottle. But it really tastes good with a lot of mayo. Did you ever used to watch TV and like with peanut butter they could go like this and it was, and it was all perfect? You know when you, you have the opportunity to be in the industry like I was sharing it with Atticus. Yes, I'm adding more mail. Um, I'll clean that off later. Um, they have people who, who, I forgot what they were called, like food artists or food. There's these people who dress the food and make it really super perfect. Did you see how I'm sloppy? That's real. Let's get real. Okay, let's walk over and look at the bologna. See how it's getting a little of that caramelized look to it? Again, I wanna, I wanna emphasize, I, I use way too much um, 
barbecue sauce. I really didn't need to use that much. And it really doesn't take this long, but I just want to make sure that I'm not burning anything. I'm going to turn up the heat. You see it? If you put the heat up too much, it genuinely splatters all over. And again, sharing with you, my mom would have this really cool device. She had two. Anyway, you can use a screen like this so it doesn't splatter all over. Or my mom, she was, it was so cute. She had this aluminum it was like walls. It was it was a panel of three, and they could fold up. She put it away, but she would keep it on her stove so it would eliminate the splattering. So if she made fried chicken or anything else, we had a lot of fried food. Again, my mom lived to be 92, and I, and I know that that there's a, a certain amount of moderation, but in the long run. Some of these diets are just a little on the silly side. Oh, wait. And you have to serve it on your best china. Hold on. I plumb near forgot. Dixie. Actually, it's Walmart brand. Oh, 2020. I can't wait for you to end. There, there's a paper shortage. Paper towel, toilet paper, paper plate. So, it's literally worth a lot more to use a paper plate. So don't judge me. They're valuable. Do you see how it bubbles up a little bit? It would be worse if it wasn't cut. It's already starting to get that, that really cool dry look. That by love, that cook look. Almost done. I think I'm going to call it. I'm going to take this one out first because it seems to be more done. Ooh, yeah. Look at all that sweet. I, kind of, I, I sort of like things burned a little bit. I'm the one that always wants the crispy fries when we go to fast food, which is not all that often anymore. It's rare. Wow, I did that with my left hand. And bring it back over here. Pray I don't drop my camera on the floor. Put the other half on. And voila. There's the sandwich. And I'm going to cut it in half this way. Sometimes I cut diagonally. It makes it look pretty. But we want to have equal portions for our lunch. My knife's not very sharp. I'm, just so you know, it smells amazing. There it is. Look at that. A barbecue bologna sandwich with homemade, home canned dill pickles. Bon appetit.